It's good to see that AI is now moving to the desktops. ByteBot is an open source AI desktop agent designed to automate computer tasks by controlling a virtual desktop environment. And that is what we are going to install and test in this video. Meet i10x, the turbo button for your workday. It automates busy work, gives real-time insights, and saves hours with unified access to ChatGPT 5, Perplexity, Claude, other top LLMs, plus image video generation. You also get 500 plus niche AI tools, which include contract drafting, marketing automation, and various more for just $10 per month. Test it via the link in the video's description, and you can also use a coupon for an extra 15% off. So try it out. Apple browsers, email clients, office tools. It processes files like PDFs and spreadsheets, and also handle complex workflows across multiple applications. Users simply describe tasks in natural language, and ByteBot executes them by simulating human actions such as clicking, typing, and navigating interfaces making it quite suitable for repetitive tasks like data entry, form filling, and multi-system integrations without requiring scripting or complex setup. Now, let's get it installed. And before I do that, let me quickly introduce you to the sponsors of the video who are our very good friends at iGent. iGent is the world's first multi-agent workforce desktop application, yet yes, another desktop application, with, but with multi-agents that empowers you to build, manage, and deploy a custom AI workforce. And I have also done a few videos on it, and you can also find the link in video's description. Okay, let me take you to my system where I'm running Ubuntu. Let me clear the screen. Let me quickly click clone the repo, and I will also drop the link to this repo in video's description. Now, one thing you would need to do in order to get it installed is to have Docker installed. So make sure that you have any a recent version of Docker installed. If you don't know how to do that, um, just check my channel and you should be able to run it. So let me clear the screen. Second thing, it runs with either OpenAI, Gemini or Anthropic. I don't see any option of running it with local models. I think given the way it deals with a lot of stuff and heavy lifting with the agentic software, I don't think so. It would be able to run with Olama based models anytime soon but i think that is the future anyway so you would need api key of course um open ai anthropic all of them are paid options even gemini too but you get a lot of free credits with gemini so what i'm going to do i already have an open ai's api key so i'm just going to put it like this where i am just putting it in the docker's environment so let me put in my key and clear the screen and now let me bring up the docker containers with the docker compose and it is going to download a lot of things you see it is using postgres and few other things while it downloads let me take you to its architecture and i will explain how exactly it works behind the scene also if you're looking to rent a vm or gpu or cpu on very affordable price you can find the link to mass compute in video's description with a discount coupon code of 50 percent for range of gpus Okay, so coming back to this diagram, unlike traditional robotic process automation or RPA tools, ByteBot leverages AI to adapt to UI changes. It understands visual interfaces and handle unexpected issues like pop-ups or errors autonomously. It emphasizes privacy and control by running entirely on self-hosted servers. So it means that um, you can apply some of the security constraint but just because it uses api based models so you know some things which they are talking about security uh, i'm not really entirely sure that holds because at the end of the day you are sending data to the external apis there are a lot of features which they have shared in their repo around autonomous and takeover operating modes, which could be a bit scary too. So, you know, do your own due diligence. You can also provide a direct desktop access for manual intervention. And also you can deploy it on Kubernetes through hem charts, or even you can deploy it on railway. And on railway, all you need to do is to provide it an API key. So 
If you're looking for a desktop tool for enterprise automation by using AI, maybe, maybe have a look at it and see if it works for you or not. And as you can see, there is a lot of model context protocol support there inside it, which enables it to access external tooling uh, in a very standardized fashion. Okay, let's go back and see what is happening. And everything seems to be in installed and running and you can see that I haven't really put it in the Anthropic or Gemini key so only open AI's API key so that is why it is giving that sort of warning let's go to our local host at port 992 and there you go so this is our byte bot running here you can give it a lot of tasks if I just scroll down here O3 GPT 4.1 you can also enable that and you can also give it your desktop access if it is enabled this is my desktop as you can see here and these are the few of the tasks which you can give it or you can simply go in and give it the task here in the natural language so let me give it one so i'm asking you to research flights from sydney to jakarta and from for october 2025 one way and give me cheapest direct flight so it is going to use my open API key to use that and you see that it is working it is actually using my own browser and all that stuff you see it is opening the firefox i'm not moving my control firefox is open and it has taken the screenshot i will let it run so that you can also see how it goes and of course be aware of your api cost because this could really go through the roof very quickly and that is why i am a huge fan of open source local free model apache 2 so that really you don't have to worry about these costs and throttling and all that stuff and whenever it is doing these sort of web scraping and stuff it takes a bit of a time I will let it run and if you see it is also showing you the coordinates where it is clicking and all that stuff it's a bit slow I mean humans can work a lot faster and there you go so it has <clears throat> shown the search in the browser on the right hand side but uh, it wasn't there in the left hand side maybe there is some lag but i can already tell by reading from the right hand side that it has done the searches and it has given the direct one way flight for october around 370 dollar which is very cheap and similarly you can see that you can open um, some other terminals and stuff you see it has done the task it seems and this is the task so i'll just go to the home and this is the task you can also check it from here and this is our desktop which it is showing at the moment and these are the documents which you can access from their website so maybe i'll just say um, what is the cpu uh, specs on my system let's see if it is able to do that i'm just checking if it opens a terminal or if it there you go so terminal has been opened let's see what command it gives there you go lscpu and this is exactly that is true that is my cpu consumption so it has all the information now that is scary right so it can just access my system it can um, you see it is scrolling up here so it can just get the file send it across so if you're implementing these sort of things in your personal environment enterprise environment make sure you're aware of the security constraints because remember it is using api based models there you go it has got the information right so not only you can do the web searches you can control your own computer and you can do a lot of other things um, it includes a virtual desktop and agent as i just showed you in that architectural diagram and you can also take the control in between 
So that's it. Let me know what do you think about it. Pretty impressive, no doubt about that. If you like the content, please consider becoming a member and like the video, subscribe as it helps. Thank you for all the support.